everybody, thank you for tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get great interviews to great interviewees and sometimes a comedic touch. Today, I've got uh, one of the uh, best singers of rock out there, um, John Bush, uh, Armored Saint. Uh, he also filled in for Joy Belladonna and Anthrax, but he's back with Armored Saint. He's been back for decades. Um, how are you doing today, John? What's up, Ernest? How are you? I'm not too bad, not too bad at all. Uh, we were talking earlier, and uh, John tells me he's an avid hockey fan, and uh, you said something about your son just won some championship in California? Yeah, his league, uh, he played Bantam AA uh, last year, and they won the state championship here in California, and wow. it was quite an accomplishment. It was awesome. They got to go to nationals, and they ended up going one and two in nationals, which was in Kalamazoo, Michigan, not too far from you. No, no, uh, that's true. And but um, but you know they 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 still had a great season and uh, it was it was a, quite an accomplishment. It's cool because I know a lot of people are like hockey California, but there's some great hockey out here actually that's just uh, really high level. So yeah, um, that's cool. So so before we start talking uh, more about you, uh, does he have a career path? Does he want to get a scholarship <laughs> to play professional? Um, well, I'm sure he has aspirations to right. play hockey and on a you know on a NHL level um, unfortunately he has my DNA and um, that made him small and mm. that kind of works against him a little bit and he always tells my wife why did you par- marry somebody bigger and <laughs> well well you did. you're pretty big and you're pretty big and famous in the music industry well I, I keep telling him that um, that to be you know to make it in the NHL is probably on the same level of being a giant you know rock star and and even though I've had a nice career, you know, I've never been a massive rock star in the terms of like the financial benefits of, of what it would be like when if you're, you know, playing arenas and, and stadiums and such. So, um, you know, I, I tell him he can go as far as he wants, as long as he has uh, a lot of mo- uh, motivation and, and really the effort is the key. Uh, you yeah. know, to, to me, it, you can overcome a lot of things with just hard work. So um, that's what I try to instill in him. And that's. That's what I've done through the years and, um, you know, just try to give, give everything I got, no matter who's there, how many people, uh, you know, how many sales you have. It's just you, you give everything you have at every show, at every uh, performance in the studio and, mm-hmm. and then everything kind of happens in a kind of natural way that it shows that you're, that you're talented and, and you got the, yeah. and the right stuff. Yeah. And uh, right behind me, we've got March of the Saint, the album cover, uh, my favorite album of um, all the albums that you guys have put out over the years. Um, and uh, we were talking earlier, Michael James Jackson just passed away. And uh, I didn't realize um, he produced that album. Yeah, somebody told me, a buddy, buddy of mine, Bob Malvani, and told me that yesterday that he that he passed away. And I went, wow. So I looked it up and um, it was funny. He did a lot of pop albums that I didn't really know, apparently. Uh, Red Rider and uh, uh, wow. he, he did some other stuff. Of course, he's known for Kiss, uh, Creatures of the Night, Lick It Up. Yeah. I guess he did an Ali Guns record, uh, Hollywood Vampires. He did March of the Saint. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he was a good guy. We didn't always have, we didn't always see eye to eye in the studio about the direction of what we wanted to do and what Armored Saint was. We were all 20, 21 year old punks and probably not wanting to take any uh advice from anybody at that point let alone mm-hmm. something like michael because he was kind of a he was a, a mild-mannered guy mm-hmm. um which was great i mean he was nothing but nice but um you know i think that we were just rebellious at that time and uh we we saw the band in one way and he kind of saw us in another way and then there was the label and uh we tried yeah. to make all that work and in the end it's a great record i think oh it was yeah songs. Of, of course i I, I think that it could have been a, a little bit, a little bit uh, just raw, more raw, a record, it was more like what we sound like live. And it was yeah. a little polished, uh, unfortunately, but, um, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, Take a Turn is my favorite tune off of that album, but, you know, March of the Saint is, uh, is, is another great one as well. Yeah. Glory Hunter, Stricken by Fate. You know, these are great songs. Uh, False Alarm was like one of our most popular yeah, songs yeah, back sure. in the day. And, uh, yeah, it's a great album, and uh, I'm sad about Michael James. He had a great career, and uh, rest in peace, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> a subconscious thing that might have come out, you mentioned Red Rider, who's a Canadian <laughs> band. Oh, are they Canadian? Yeah, Tom Cochran. That, oh, really? 
my life's my life's a highway. He he was the original. He was my, the my life's a highway. He was in Red Rider. Yeah, that was his band first. Oh, oh, that's funny. But that was a solo song, right? Uh, which one? What, what my life's a highway? What's his? Yeah, name? yeah. He went solo. Yeah, he left Red Rider and he was doing that solo. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, yeah, it's he had all a song with Red that- Rider called Lunatic Fringe. Lunatic Fringe. Yeah, that's a great that's- song. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what have you been doing the last couple of years uh, to keep sane? Uh, you know, until everything started to open up a bit last year. Well, um, I worked. You know, my wife and I we we have a, a a business that we that well she put together and I kind of came in on it after um, we got together, which was twenty years ago. We just celebrated our twentieth anniversary, which is awesome in April. Yeah. Great accomplishment and. Um, you know, we work together a lot in, in trying to keep our business going. She is, she's a casting director and cast commercials and I help her do that. Nice. So we were trying to keep that going and we had to do a lot of stuff, um, through zoom as we're doing yeah. right now and self taping. And it was a different yeah. method of, of, of doing that. Um, obviously we put out, um, punching the sky right around October, 2020 and yeah. you haven't played any shows in connection with it. Um, finally, we got this tour coming up with Wasp, uh, which is going to be a cool, it's going to be a great run. We unfortunately are not making it to Canada, which is yeah. uh, really uh, it pisses me off. And Well, you'll, you'll be close enough, I mean, um, because you'll be playing Harpo's in Detroit. Right, right. And, uh, and you know, it. I mean, who knows, maybe we could do another leg with it if it does, mm-hmm. success, if it's successful. And I think, of course, this is my idea. <laughs> no one's talked to Blackie about that, but yeah. this is my idea. Um yeah. If it, but if it does, you know, maybe we could do a Canadian run, which would be great because you know Armored Saints never really technically played um, places like Edmonton and Winnipeg and Calgary, and we haven't played Vancouver in years. And we finally just played Toronto and Montreal a couple of years ago, and we did the Symbol Salvation in yeah. its entirety tour. But it had been like thirty years since we played wow. those two places, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, Quebec City is another great place to go play, and um, yeah. obviously, it did all those places with anthrax and and sainted in the early days but it'd be great to do a tour like you know with wasp maybe just a canadian run or something and maybe yeah. we could do that if this tour goes well and um, well, so like, far the shows are selling very well and i'm happy about that it's a great run because wasp hasn't toured in years yeah. i don't think they've played in america in like 18 years or something like that and there's a lot of places that we're going to play uh, that we haven't played in years as well, like places like Albuquerque and yeah, I saw that. Charlotte, North Carolina. And we haven't played these places in a long time. So I'm excited about it. It's going to be a good run. And and like I said, we hadn't played for Punching the Sky. So um, it came out and then we, we made a lot of videos. That was one thing that we did. We made four videos for that record, which is really awesome. Kudos to Metal Blade for making that happen. And mm-hmm. um, that kept us a little busy and, and kept us in the public's eye when we we weren't able to do anything and, uh, you know, spend time driving my son to hockey. You know, I'm like his personal Uber driver and yeah, my wife is too. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, we kept busy. We, you know, we, we, we have a good life. We're very fortunate. That's great. Um, so the tour starts uh, exactly when? I think the first show is uh, in Las Vegas on the 27th or 28th of October. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and it's kind of funny. It starts like, well, originally the first show was in Orange County um, here in Southern California. And then it really was going all around the country and ending, well, it wasn't originally ending in LA. And, and then they finally added an LA show at the end of it. So mm-hmm. uh, we're playing the Wiltern Theater, which is a great old venue here in Los Angeles, holds about 2,300. And nice. it's, right in, it's right in like uh, Koreatown and just a great, great killer venue. And it, it's an old theater. It's been there for years. And I, right. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of bands play there, but I haven't actually uh, been to, I've, I've been to shows there, but I, I, I'm, I'm really excited to play because I've never played there. So it'll be really, it'll be really cool. Nice. So um, I, I briefly looked at the schedule. What I'm just saying, just from looking really quick, is it what, 25 shows? Is that? Roughly. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, and you and, and, and like I was saying, the the cool thing is we're playing LA now because we were originally it wasn't on the list of dates, and I'm like, um, Wasp and Armored Saint are from Los Angeles, yeah, where we both started. Maybe we should play LA. Yeah, uh, somebody help. 
And and then finally they added the show and uh, I was happy about that. So it's kind of funny. It starts in Southern California, goes around the whole country and then ends up back in Southern California. So you'll have a big party that night for sure. You know it. You know it. <laughs> or I'll just be super tired and want to go to bed. Yeah, I know you won't have to go far to go to bed. You won't have to tour in a bus. I, I could I could I I could probably take the bus, the actual metro bus to I as a matter of fact, I think me and my wife have taken the bus to shows there from where I live. It's literally right down Wilshire Boulevard. It's it's probably like 10 minutes away from my house. So right on. Um, are you guys uh, writing any, like your last album release was uh, 2020, but then you released the live Salvation. Are you guys currently in the process of writing more music? We're not right now. We haven't begun doing that. Um, you know, it's in the back of our minds. Um, I don't know. It, you know, it, if I don't think we're quite ready and I don't know if I'm quite ready to, to tackle, start writing a new record, but mm. Especially because, you know, usually you go out and play and you tour and you play songs from your record. And and then you once you exhaust that, then you kind of go back and say, OK, let's start writing songs again and mm -hmm. kind of go back into that world. And it's, you know, this is kind of cyclical thing that happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that maybe because we haven't actually toured and, and played sh songs from that record that we're still itching to do that. And, yeah. Um, you so know, maybe once, when you come get that out of our pardon maybe when you come back from the tour and you get that out of your system right you can start to get that vibe again from being on the road and the camaraderie right. with the other band members and the vibe from the fans and it might give you an itch to hey wait this this is why we started in the first place let's start exactly again. exactly it's the, you, you hit it on the on the head with that Right on. So we'll keep you very much longer. I um, uh, want to thank you and Tori for your time. And uh, before I let you go, there's a couple things. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe, John? Unsubscribed? The opposite, yeah. Wow. Um, uns the opposite of unsubscribed. Yeah, just the basic thing that comes to your mind. Um, it means uh, the... For me, the opposite of that is it's time to actually renew some of my subscriptions. Um, my mm. my uh, subscription to Men's Health and National Geographic has ended. So maybe it's a reminder to me okay. that it's time to renew my subscription. I don't know. You got me. On is, is Tori in the area right there with you? Um, no, she stepped out. I don't know where she went, actually. I was going to see if she knew what the opposite of unsubscribe. Are we, this is, are we really looking for the exact? Uh, yeah. So somebody term? says, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Thank you. Do oh, I mean, I did. Bush says okay, so subscribe I, I to thought you channel. Were, I just assumed you were looking for something a little more complicated. I made it more difficult than it had to be. Hey, you know what? That's great. So everybody <laughs> subscribe to the channel. John suggests and you'll get great interviews and, uh, and some great uh, interviewees. Um, Dude, you got me on that. I was, I was trying <laughs> to be more creative than I could be. Yeah, well, that's okay. I appreciate you. You're, you're a thinker, John. You're a deep <laughs> thinker. Um, do you have any Canadian uh, bands or influences that, uh, past or present that um, you'd say that they influenced you in your singing and your style? Um, let's go back to Lee Aaron. Yes, Lee Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> <Metal Queen>. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm kind of slightly joking, but I... But oh, no, Aaron. she was she was great. I mean, she was obviously talented visually, but she's a great singer, and she had John Albany, great guitar player, and that album... Oh, no, for, sure, for sure, for um, sure. Devin Townsend is awesome. He's I hear that a lot now. Yeah, he's amazing, um, and done some really, you know, just some creative stuff out there. He's he's a talented guy, and um, really continues to push himself as a as an artist and musician. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, no, it all starts with Rush. I mean, of course, but I was again trying to kind of avoid the the obvious there, like I I was with the question about unsubscribe. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, the Guess Who is a great band. Burton yeah. Cummings and what an awesome yeah. singer he was. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I loved the way he was like ballsy, but could sing these ballads and, and yeah. just sing it so heartfelt. 
And yet, like his voice was mean at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, the connection with BTO is, is always cool. With, and Randy Bachman, right? He was in did Guess he, Who, right? He just got his guitar back. Did you see that? I didn't. Did he get it stolen or something? 40 years ago, somebody ripped it off after a show in Toronto. And he went, it was a Gretsch. And he went through all the Gretsch vintage stores and he just put out ads for like 20 years, nothing. And then all of a sudden, somebody bought it in Japan, in Tokyo, and it got on the internet. And somehow, long story short, they ended up communicating and they just exchanged their guitars uh, somewhere in uh, Tokyo. He got them a Gretsch from the same year, different model, because he went and found it. And this guy returned this guitar. It was really unique. Wow, that's awesome. Well, good for him. I mean, I guess uh, time uh, paid off in the end. Right. So, you know, it's funny. When I was in Anthrax, um, uh, we did a tour. I think it was the first, right after the album Volume 8 came out, mm -hmm. 1990. What year was that now? I'm trying. Um, let's see, 98, maybe? Uh, what year was Volume 8? Why noise? 93, 95. I think it was 98. In any case, we did this tour. It was the first like run we did, and it was all cities in Quebec. It was called the Polywog Festival. I don't know if they still do that. And again, Not this sure. is a long time ago. But it was only groups that did it that were from Quebec and maybe Canadian groups. And Anthrax was the only exception to it. Wow. And we played all these trippy places. It was summer, but we played all these kind of unusual places that kind of stick in my head, like Wumuski and yeah. Port Cartier yeah. and, um, you know, obviously Quebec City and, and Montreal were, were the two big ones, but there was like three or four other cities that, you know, we were like, where are we and what, what, <laughs> what cities are these? And one of them was like even closer to the Arctic Circle. I can't remember right. which city it was, but I always have a, a memory of that, of those, of playing those shows and, and being in Canada in that particular part. And we were, like I said, we were the only American band there. So it was, it was a funny, uh, like I said, a memory of, in my, my years with Anthrax. And, That's and awesome. Was Voivod on that uh, bill? I don't believe they were, um, but maybe, maybe the, uh, there were, I mean, we were certainly the most popular band on the bill, mm -hmm. but there might've been a, a band or two that was a little, it was equally as popular or almost as popular as we were at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember Voivod on it. I think I would remember that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyways, it was kind of a funny memory, but yeah, I mean, I, I have great memories of doing lots of cool stuff in Canada. Of course, the first Metallica Wasp Armored Saint tour uh, yeah. played in, in Quebec city and Montreal and Toronto. And um, I have memories of that. And like I said, it, Armored Saint, I, I, it would be cool if we could do a run. Yeah, I'm pl I'm planting a seed here in, in some people's minds, including Blackie, of like it would be cool to do a Canadian run with this Wasp tour. I think that'd it would be, be great, man. Really yeah. rad. And I, I think I've looked lately on on there's a cool website, setlistfm.com, where you can go put in a band in a city and it'll tell you the last time they were there. I don't know if are you familiar yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, I'm familiar with it, yeah. And um, I use it sometimes on the road because I want to see, hey, what, what songs did we play here last time? Because I don't want to replay the same tune. It ended, it's it up, yeah. And, um, and I looked the last time Wasp, just out of curiosity, played uh, places like Toronto and Montreal. And I, I noticed it had been a long time. So they're overdue for some shows there as well. So a real quick make, it, make it happen, Ernest. I will do my best. I just uh, helped uh, bring a Killer Dwarf show here. Where I live, but uh, the Blackie Lawless thing is very unique because uh, you had MTV, we had much music in Canada, of course. yeah, and then we had Erica M, who was one of the showpieces, the the VJs, very popular, and she didn't interview J uh, Blackie Lawless because I interviewed her, and she said it was one of the best interviews she's ever had. She said she comes in, they don't tell her who she's got to interview that day. It turns out just Blackie Blackie Lawless, this guy that looks so scary. He's into this hard rock band, and she goes, he was one of the most intelligent men I've ever interviewed. And she said, he invited me to dinner because he just wanted to chat. She goes, I it just accepted the dinner invitation just out of respect. She goes, he was so respectful. He wasn't looking for anything more. 
but he was so intelligent. Wow, that's great. So, that's Blocky, awesome. if you hear that, you, if you're that intelligent, get your butts up here with Armin Saint for a tour, man. <laughs> Perfectly spoken. But, uh, hey, I'd <laughs> like to thank you for your time. Thanks uh, to uh, Tori for helping to set this up. Well, I see her name on it, so. Yeah, uh, because uh, we share an email. I'm uh, When it comes to anything uh, technical, I'm, I'm pretty inept, so she helps me with the yeah. lots of stuff. As she was helping me find the right place in the room to, yeah. to have a good background, which we did in the end, I think. It does. I love it. Like nice rocking chair. You're you're, you're rocking. Wow, well, dude! I, I hurt my back a couple of days ago. I'm like walking around like I'm looking like I'm 80. I gotta loosen it up. I'm trying. Yeah, those hamstring stretches in the morning will help, John. Dude, I mean, I missed out on my uh, weekly basketball game that I usually play. I still play pickup, and um, I didn't play yesterday because I was injured but um i'm doing this show with uh, metal allegiance the guys um uh, that i've done some stuff with and did a song on their second album and mm -hmm. they're playing uh, a show on rock and rio so uh, oh, that's wow. september 1st so that's going to be awesome i've never played rock and rio so i got to get wow. better and i i need to start working on 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 the saint songs i i haven't really i've been procrastinating because I don't want to burn out on my own material. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I've, I've waited and I've sang to some like Zeppelin tunes and, you know, some red rider and, uh, <laughs> and nice. just, just done, done different things to, to keep my voice in shape, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's time to start working on, on the same songs now because the tour is not too far away. A couple months. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it, John. I might hit that one up in Harpo's. In Please do. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. track you down. Yeah, man. Okay, well, thanks a lot for your time, buddy, and uh, God bless. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. All right, thanks, Ernest. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, bud. Bye-bye. <laughs>